Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to swap a crankshaft from two identical engines. Now you may wonder why would you want to switch the crankshaft from one engine to the other? Well that's all because the ends of the crankshaft can be different depending on the application that the engine is used for. For example, most crankshafts are keyed like this, while others may have a tapered end like this. What I'm going to do today is take this crankshaft and insert it into that engine. And because that engine has a different crankshaft, I just can't take that engine and put it on the piece of equipment. I actually have to swap out the crankshafts. Now before you swap out a crankshaft, you want to make sure it's the same brand of engine and the same size. In this case here, they're both 5 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engines and the crankshaft should fit flawlessly in there. To get started, make sure you've drained all the oil from your engine. There's one at the bottom here and also at the bottom on the other side. Now the recoil should come off. The next thing that needs to be removed is the flywheel and the starter clutch over here. And to remove the starter clutch I have this Briggs & Stratton tool. I'll put a link under the video to where you can buy one directly online. If you don't have this tool you can use a large pipe wrench. You can put it on the starter clutch and undo it. You will have to hold the flywheel to do this. It's much easier with this tool. You just put it on. It fits perfectly. And what works good with this tool is an impact wrench. Now to remove the flywheel I'm going to use an air hammer and I'm also going to use a pry bar. Now you want to put the pry bar somewhere where it will not damage the engine and just keep a little bit of pressure on. Make absolutely sure that you wear safety glasses while doing this. Now I'm going to place the air hammer right here. Keep a bit of pressure on the pry bar and the flywheel is loose. In this case the flywheel key came off. Make sure you do not lose this. Now I'm going to remove all the 3 8 bolts that hold the sump cover on. Now I'm going to use a rubber mallet just to loosen off the cover. You just want to find something like this part over here just to hammer on. And this cover here has already separated itself from the block which is good. Now I'll flip it over. Now I'm just going to pull on the sump cover. And again, you can see why it's very important to drain the oil before you start this because if you don't, you're going to have a whole bunch of oil coming out. There is still a little bit of oil in there, but not enough to cause a big mess. I've noticed here a bit of difference from this engine to the other engine I took out the shaft from. And that difference is that there's a bearing over here on the shaft. And you can see that it does go inside here. But on the other engine, it's just like a bushing type hole. There's no bearing whatsoever. This is a much better setup I believe, but I'm going to have to remove the shaft anyways, the bearing is going to come out. Now I'm going to reach under here with an 8mm socket and remove both bolts that hold the connecting rod on. I'm going to start with this one instead. I'm going to use a box end wrench for this one. Just watch your hands because these edges here can be sharp. Also take good note of the position of the oil dipper here underneath the connecting rod. And also before I get too far in the disassembly, I'm just going to mark both sides here of the connecting rod. Then I'm absolutely sure I'm putting the pieces correctly back together. And now it's just a matter of getting the bolts right out. So I've got both bolts out and the oil dipper. This is the exact position that it was in. This is very important for when you reassemble the engine. Now I should be able to pop the bottom part of the connecting rod. Now I'm just going to move the engine slightly to dislodge it from the connecting rod. Just as you see over here. And I'll try this way and it might be easier. Also the valve lifters will fall from the block here. I've managed to put them back in their respective holes. It's always good to put them back exactly where they were because they're worn evenly with all the rest of the parts. This is the shaft I just removed. This is the shaft I'm putting in. As you can see, they're pretty well the same. Again, the reason why they're different is because they were used in an engine for a different application. Now I'm going to put the other crankshaft inside that engine. I'm going to put a bit of oil on the shaft here. It'll just make it easier to go in nice and smoother as well. Now I'm going to slide it in. What you want to do is avoid the connecting rod with these parts of the shaft. So I'm just going to go down like this. It does not have far to go in. Then you want to line up the connecting rod to the crankshaft. Now 
Now I'm going to put the bolts and the oil dipper in the connecting rod bottom. This is the position that the oil dipper goes on this engine and I'm going to match up my marker marks here. Now that I've got the bolts started I'm just going to put a bit of oil here. Just going to lube up the end of the connecting rod. And I'm just going to go in with the socket and turn it by hand to just snug up the bolts. Now I believe that the torque specs for the connecting rod bolts at the bottom are 100 inch pounds. And I've got my torque wrench set at 100 inch pounds. I've had to realign the crankshaft in order to fit my torque wrench in there. So I'm going to tighten up the bolts until I hear a click on my wrench. And there we go. At this point here, because the inside of the engine is pretty dirty with old oil, I'm going to bring it to my parts washer and wash out the inside first. I'm just going to rinse out all the dirt from inside the engine and the old oil. You can also use old gas if you don't have a parts washer. Just be very careful though because this fluid and the fuel is very flammable. Alright guys, now I'm going to clean off the old gasket material on the sump cover and the engine and then continue from there. Now I'm going to have to use the sump cover from the other engine because it does not have a bearing here like the other one did. All the old gasket material on the cover must be cleaned off. And to do this I'm going to use my die grinder and some scotch Bright pads. This one's a bit used but it is the green roll lock pad that goes on your die grinder. And make absolutely sure you wear safety glasses when you do this. And I'm just going to air blow the dust off. And that small pad on the die grinder does an excellent job. As you can see it's nice and clean. This will ensure that you have a nice tight seal there with the gasket. And I repeated the same process on the engine block where the gasket goes so it's nice and clean. And then I cleaned that off in my parts washer as well. At this point here I need to install the valve lifters and this particular lifter here was installed at the front here and I'll put the second one in. Now I'm going to put a bit of oil where the camshaft goes in. By the way this oil is a mix of engine oil and transmission oil. You can use any type of oil in there. The next thing to install is the cam gear. You can see that there is a keyway hole in it over here and that will match perfectly on the key on the crankshaft. And again the side with the timing mark will be facing up. And here's the key on the shaft. You can also put a bit of oil over here if you want. This will make it easier for the gear to slide onto. And that's all there is to it. Push it down as far as you can. I've also put a bit of oil here where the camshaft will go. When you reinstall the camshaft you want to line up the timing mark over here to the mark on the cam gear right here. To make it easier, I'm just going to turn the engine a bit so that the timing mark faces horizontally like this. And now when I put the camshaft in, I just want to line up the two marks together. Just like this. That's perfect. Sometimes you end up having to turn the crankshaft just to line it up properly, but today was a bit easier. What I'm going to do with this emery paper, which is a 600 grit, is just lightly sand the crankshaft over here where you see a little bit of rust. This will make it easier for the sump cover to slide over into place. All you have to do is lightly sand it. It's just going to make it nice and smooth and it's not going to cause a restriction. Again, do not go below a 400 grit emery paper. That will be too rough if you're below that number. And just wipe it nice and clean. And you can see it's much better and it's nice and smooth. At this point here I'm going to apply a thin layer of ultra black Permatex RTV silicone. Again I'm going to emphasize a thin layer. There is a gasket going on here as well so it will stop the oil from leaking. This is just like a backup protection and I'm going to do this all the way around. Now I'm going to apply the gasket.
And the part number for this gasket from Briggs & Stratton is number 270125. What I'm going to do is put a link under the video to where you can directly buy one online. And I'm going to apply a thin layer of gasket maker on the sum cover as well. What you can do now is put a bit of oil on the shaft. This will make it easier for the sump cover to go on as well. And I'm also going to put a bit of oil at the end of the camshaft here. And now grab your sump cover and just reinstall it. And that went in perfectly. Now I'm going to reinstall the bolts. There are six bolts all together. All I'm going to do for now is just snug all the bolts. I will not tighten them up fully yet. This will ensure that the cover goes on nice and evenly. What I'm going to do is tighten them up in a crisscross pattern. Again, this will make sure that the cover is on nice and even. So I tighten up this one. I'm going to go up here. Now over here. That's the most important thing when you put on a sum cover is to make sure that all the bolts are on evenly. And what this helps is to prevent any oil leaks. And the last one is up here. I'm just going to do a final go around. And that's it. What I've done now is taken the fuel tank and the carburetor off the old engine and put it on the engine that I'm fixing. That's why you're going to notice a different air filter and a fuel tank in the video now. Now I'm going to reinstall the flywheel, but first I need to install the flywheel key onto the shaft. And you want to put it on there nice and tight like this. And I'm going to line up the hole here on the flywheel to the flywheel key. Now since I'll be using this recoil and not the older one that was on the engine, I need to install the starter cup, which came from the previous engine. It will be much different than the starter clutch I took off at the beginning of this video. So this is the one I took off at the beginning of the video, and this is the one I'm replacing it with. And the reason I'm doing that is because the starter parts are much different on both recoils. Before reinstalling the starter cup, make sure to put the screen through it like this, and then put it on the engine. Now I'm going to lock up the flywheel with a large screwdriver right here. And now I'm ready to put on the recoil. Before installing the recoil, make sure the spark plug wire is in the groove over here. Now I'm going to put on the two bolts up here. And there's a bolt that goes on each side at the bottom. Now I'm going to go around and tighten up all the four bolts. Also make sure that the flap here is tucked in underneath the recoil just like this. Now everything's installed, I'm going to turn it over to make sure everything is nice and smooth. And I've got the spark plug off, that's why it's easier to pull. And that's perfect. And the spark plug in here is a Champion RJ19LM and I'm going to reinstall it. Since this engine will be used in a cold climate, I'm going to put in some 5W30 engine oil. And I believe this engine only takes approximately half to three quarters of a liter or a quart. Now since there's no dipstick on the oil cap, you just basically fill up the oil over here till you see it. And if I move the engine a bit, you can see that the oil is coming up at the bottom of the thread, so that's going to be good enough. Now I'm going to gas it up. Okay guys, I've got the engine outside for better ventilation. As you can see, I took off the air breather from the carburetor. To make it easier, I'm just going to spray some carb cleaner. So 
as you can see, there's no problems at all switching a crankshaft as long as it's from the same brand of engine and the same size. And now this odd tapered shaft will be ready to go back on the leaf vacuum. Thanks for watching guys, make sure to subscribe and you can see me in my next video. Have a great day.